Welcome to the Rise and Grind workshop. If you're new here, my name is Ryan, and this right here is our Eon Mira 9. This is a CO2 laser engraver, and today I'm gonna to walk you through the entire process of how to drain that chiller and replace your water with some fresh distilled water. Now this right here is an industrial standalone chiller. This model is a 5202. You will typically see a CW5200 and the 5202. They're gonna be very similar in price, but here's a pro tip for you when it comes to chillers. If you plan on upgrading your shop in the future and running multiple lasers, the 5202 has four ports on the back side of it. That's gonna allow one chiller to cool two different laser tubes. The 5200 only has an inlet and an outlet port on the back side, and that is designed to run one laser. So now with our Eon Mira 9 off of the wall, that's gonna give you access to the backside of the laser engraver. And this right here is where the chiller unit is housed. This happens to be the model RMCW5000. You will see a CW5000 chiller on the market as well, although the 5200 is more common. Now, one of the things I really like about having this compact chiller unit on the backside of the unit, obviously we can set this thing pretty close to the wall and we are not sacrificing extra floor space by having to have that larger industrial chiller sitting next to this laser engraver. This makes it very easy to do your maintenance and move it around the shop. However, if you do run into an issue with your chiller and you need to remove it for maintenance, that is gonna be a little bit more cumbersome and involve a little bit more elbow grease. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's go ahead and go over this chiller and show you how to get the water drained out of it. Again, this is a very straightforward process. You have the water inlet cap right here. This is gonna be your control panel right here. And this red, green, and yellow sticker that says alarm, normal, and full, this is gonna be your water level indicator. You wanna make sure this thing is at a minimum up here within the green and preferably up here in the full. And moving right along down here in the bottom right, this is your water outlet. Clearly, you're gonna need some type of waterproof vessel to catch all of the dirty water. We're just gonna use a five gallon bucket and we're gonna place that right below the water outlet. I do see a lot of people simply open this water outlet up and they get weak water flow. Here's a pro tip. Go ahead and open the water inlet cap. Set that on top. Get your bucket ready. Open up that water outlet. I've got this little hose here. I just don't wanna make a mess everywhere. I haven't even used this before. I just found it when I was cleaning up, so we're gonna try it. Bam. Now off the top of my head, I think this chiller holds about one and a half gallons. So the five gallon bucket is more than enough. So again, if you're having a little bit of trouble, some slow draining, just open the top fill cap. You don't have to use a little hose like I did here, but this just helps keep it nice and clean. So we're just gonna go ahead and let this complete draining out, guys. While the chiller is draining, if you're new to CO2 laser engravers, you're typically gonna find that CO2 laser tube on the back side of the laser unit. Guess I already had it unlocked. And we'll take a quick look at that. So this right here is the CO2 laser tube. And like I talked about earlier, this is a Reese glass CO2 laser tube. Once this laser gets turned on, that distilled water is gonna be flowing through this glass laser tube. So this is a 90 watt CO2 laser tube. And at the end of the day, this laser tube gets extremely hot. It's very powerful and it is shooting a laser beam into various materials, creating a lot of smoke inside of that laser cabinet. That's why it's very critical on these larger laser units, you run an industrial chiller like we've been talking about. That water recirculating through that tube is gonna keep those temperatures in operating spec. That's gonna allow this laser tube to produce consistent results. So for example, if you have a 90 watt CO2 laser tube and you're all of a sudden struggling to get clean pass-through cuts on your vector cutting, your water chiller might be dirty and it might be time to flush that chiller. And let's be real guys, when it comes to maintenance, nobody likes doing it. The manufacturer does recommend you should flush or change your chiller every three to six months. So now that we got the water drained out of the Eon Mira 9, let's go ahead and talk about liquids. Anytime you fill up your chiller, you want to strictly use distilled water only. One more time, you strictly want to use distilled water only only. Luckily for me, I'm in a temperature controlled environment. There's lots of concerns when it comes to a chiller. If you are working in an environment that gets freezing cold temperatures and you do not want your chiller to freeze up, you have two options. 
You can use a antifreeze that is safe for the laser engraving industry. I'll drop a link down below in the description where you can find some of those. Option number two, you can find yourself a submersible heater, something like a 100 watt aquarium heater you can pick up from your local pet store. Both of those options will prevent any of your liquids inside of your chiller from freezing up if you're not in a temperature controlled environment. Now the main reason we're using distilled water only inside of this chiller. Flow is very important. The last thing you wanna do is put a bunch of hard water inside of this chiller and have a bunch of calcium or mineral buildup blocking that flow. That's why you only wanna use distilled water. Now I would also like to mention, it is recommended by the manufacturer that you put a small amount of algicide inside of this chiller. That way you can prevent any type of bacteria growth or any type of algae. Me personally, I've never ran any algicide. I do my maintenance on my chillers fairly often, so that's never been an issue for me. And here's a pro tip for you, courtesy of Xavier. He's a repair tech over at Eon USA. A lot of people don't recognize that the water is a very important part of a CO2 laser tube. The trace minerals and elements inside of that water, that's what helps excite that laser tube. So if you've been running your laser for six months to nine months and you've noticed a decrease in performance, did you know that not maintaining your chiller and keeping dirty water in there can greatly impact the performance of your CO2 laser tube? If you have not changed or flushed your chiller in quite some time, I would highly recommend that and take a quick look and see if your performance improves. And lastly, depending on how long it's been since you've changed your chiller water or if your water is extremely dirty, you might want to flush this and repeat that process three to four times. So at this point in the process, if you notice your water was really dirty, you can leave your hose attached and just start pouring some fresh water into the water inlet. And that will go ahead and loosen up some of the remaining water and get that down into the bucket. We just recently changed our water, so this is looking really clean. We're gonna go ahead and remove our hose. Go ahead and put that fill cap back on the water outlet. So again, this does not take a lot of water off the top of my head, one and a half gallons. While you're filling it up, you can simply pay attention to that level gauge I talked about earlier on the right-hand side where the red, green, and yellow sticker is. Now I'm far from the safety police. However, you will notice that I did unplug the power cord from the machine prior to draining the water and I left that cord unplugged. What we're gonna do now is we need to put the cap back on that chiller. Now keep in mind, this chiller works in a closed loop operating system. That water needs to feed into that glass tube, circulate through and come back into that chiller. Once we power cycle this unit, that water is gonna start flowing out of that chiller and into that laser tube. That's gonna lower the level of our distilled water. Once we power this unit on and start cycling that water, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and look down here and give this a visual inspection and make sure we are still within the normal operating range of that water level. Go ahead and attach the power cord to the back side of the laser. So now that we have power to the laser unit, we're gonna turn it on to cycle the water and we wanna make sure we don't incur any other leaks up in here. Once I power cycle this, hopefully the camera picks it up, but you're gonna be looking for that water to start flowing through that tube. Here we go. There it's going. Water's flowing, nothing's leaking, and we are still full just under that yellow line, so we are good to go. Well, as you guys can see, that was a very straightforward and simple process. Don't let the thought of flushing or changing your chiller water scare you. So look, you guys know I'm 100% transparent and honest here at the Rise and Grind workshop. I hate doing maintenance and I do not stay on top of the schedule like I should. However, as you can see, changing or flushing your chiller fluid is a very simple process. And if you guys actually paid attention and watched that video, you will actually see how having dirty water can harm the performance of your CO2 laser tube and actually shorten the life of your laser engraver. If you're anything like me, you worked very hard to purchase an item like this. Let's start maintaining these things and getting on a maintenance schedule so that this laser will last you quite a long time. Not only that, you're gonna have very consistent performance with the products that you're making. Oftentimes, I see people really struggling and getting frustrated, and they turn that laser machine off and they stop being creative and crafting for many months at a time, all because of something very simple like dirty water, and they just didn't get a clear answer on what was going on, and they become discouraged and they give up altogether. I don't wanna see that happen. So if you guys gained any value out of this video, now might be a great time to make sure you guys are subscribed. And I highly encourage you to drop a comment down below. I only make content that helps you guys out. So again, let me know what kind of videos you guys wanna see and what you need help with. 
And last but not least, thank you to everybody that made it this far into the video. I couldn't do this without all of your help. Please check the description down below. I'm going to have a link there for all the many ways you can help support the Rise and Grind workshop. We are an affiliate for Eon Laser USA. So if you guys would like to know a little bit more about the Eon Mira 9 or some of their other laser engraving models, feel free to send me a message. Or if you reach out to Eon Laser USA, just let them know that you watched the Rise and Grind workshop and I referred you over. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.